Hello and welcome to this session friends. My name is Yogesh. In this session we are going to discuss on AWS Elastic File System or EFS. Friends, Amazon Elastic File System provides simple scalable file storage for use with Amazon EC2 instances in the AWS cloud. So EFS service can be considered as NFS server in AWS cloud. At present, the service is available to three regions only. First one is North Virginia, second is Oregon, third is Ireland. And uh, friends, uh, EBS use NFS protocol for communication. NFS version 4.1 is used in particular. I have listed a couple of benefits of using EFS. They are low per operational latency, high throughput, durable, durable mean uh, data redundantly stored across multiple availability zones and uh, EFS allows concurrent access. Friends, concurrent access mean uh, multiple EC2 instances can mount common EFS file system and they can perform uh, read write operations or any type of IO at the same time. So in lab setup, first we will be creating a security group or you can say firewall group for EFS services. Later, we will add one rule to allow traffic on port 2049, which is default NFS communication port. So, access can be allowed uh, to the specific security groups. Then we will create one EFS file system and uh, configure mount targets. Mount target mean uh, we will configure which particular subnets can access this file system. At the end, we will install NFS client packages on one of the EC2 instance and uh, we will mount EFS file system to test whether our lab setup is done properly or something missing to validate that. So to begin with friends, uh, first I will open one session to my AWS CLI server from which we will provision uh, EFS file system and before that we will uh, create security group using CLI. So here, this is my party session. Okay, so friends, uh, to start, we need uh, three minimum informations. And uh, they are, what is our VPC ID? What is EC2 security group? And uh, what is EC2 subnet ID? To grab this information, uh, I can simply do, to get VPC ID, AWS, EC2 describe VPCS. So this will give me VPC ID. I'm pressing enter now. I go to my VPC ID. This is the one. So let me put it in my notepad. This is the VPC ID. I'm just removing quotes. I don't need quotes. Okay, next thing I want EC2 security group and subnet ID. To grab that information, I can simply run AWS EC2 describe instances and pipe it to more. Okay, this bit is my group ID. If you see this, this is security group. This is security group ID and copy this one and paste it to my notepad. I need uh, my subnet ID and here is the subnet ID if you see this bit. So friends, uh, each availability zone got its uh, different subnet ID by default. So it's uh, required to know uh, the actual subnet ID on which you want to allow access. I will show you how we can, we have to use it. Okay, friends, so we got our necessary information. Next step, friends, uh, we have to create uh, one security group. And uh, I will name that security group as EFS service group SG okay so here this is the command to create security group AWS EC2 create security group region is US West 2 as I said the service is available only in three regions so I'm choosing one of them because my EC2 instances are in US West 2 so I'm sticking with the same region for EFS services and this is a group name you can put any sensible name here and description you can put some description which will help you to identify this one and VPC ID is a VPC ID which 
we checked here this is the vpc id i paste it here pressing enter this will create a security group so security group is created this is the security group id for efs now we have to add rule to allow traffic on port 2049 so friends as we know when we create firewall rule we need the source destination protocol and port so we already have three informations we know what is our destination destination is this one our efs security group port is 2049 which is nfs port and uh, protocol is tcp only thing we need source and source is here which is our ec2 security group this one ec2 security group so we got all four informations now let's create one rule so this is the way to create a rule group id will be our target group id which is our efs security group i'm pasting this bit here then protocol is tcp and uh, port is 2049 and source group friends source group is our ec2 security group let me paste uh, group id here this particular id and next thing friends uh, we have to specify region so it's us west 2 pressing enter here this will create a rule for us command is finished if you want to check whether rule got created or not simply type aws ec2 describe security group followed by security groups followed by group id and uh, efs group id pressing enter here so this rule got created and uh, you see traffic is allowed on port 2049 on tcp protocol this is the group id from where traffic is allowed this is our source and this is our destination basically or you can say this is the efs security group which is our destination so friends the rule is created successfully next thing we have to create uh, one efs file system to create uh, efs file system simply type aws ec2 create file system creation token friends this need to be unique and uh, i can type here yogesh lab efs sorry let's type over here yogesh lab efs okay and uh, in which region this to be created so i'm typing region us west 2 so this will create one efs file system so friends if you can see on my screen file system is created and uh, this is the file system unique id i'm copying this bit because we will need this one uh, in future commands i have added uh, this particular entry which is our efs file system id so friends next thing we have to create mount targets to create mount target simply type aws efs create mount target file system id is the file system id which is this one i'm just copy pasting from here okay next thing friends subnet id so subnet id you have to use which is our ec2 subnet id this one let me show you on my notepad ending with f6 ending with f6 okay so we got right subnet id and friends in case you got multiple subnets like in a region you want to uh, allow efs access from uh, different availability zones or different subnets just mention multiple subnets comma separated that's it and then the security group friends security group is this one security group and what's the security group id let me copy paste this is our efs security group i have to type so this is efs security group 21e and need to be separated by space okay so security group is added then at the end friends we have to specify region region is us west 2 and pressing enter here command finish successfully if you see this is the mount target id again this is the unique one and uh, this is the file system and this is the life cycle state friends it mean uh, it is now creating the mount target 
so it will finish in couple of seconds and this is the IP address of EFS mount using this IP we will be accessing EFS mount uh, but uh, instead of using IP we will use our DNS service because this IP will automatically get associated associated with the DNS entry at Amazon so here I'm just running command AWS EFS describe mount targets to check uh, what's the state of this particular mount target because here it is showing creating so uh, to get the latest update uh, it is giving error to saying mount target ID is missing okay to do so so here I have to specify using dash dash mount target ID which will be a string or I can use uh, sorry control u aws ec2 sorry efs describe targets then mount target id dash dash mount target id and this is our mount target id fs empty pressing enter here Okay, so friends, uh, this particular mount target is available now. Next thing we have to mount it on uh, one EC2 server. So let me log into one server now. Here, friends, I'm opening session to my uh, EC2 instance using my PEM file, which is my uh, identity file. Pressing enter here. Okay, so we are in let me elevate my privileges to root okay so i'm root uh, next thing friends uh, to mount efs file system on client because this server is client now efs client i have to follow a specific format for efs file share naming friends if you can see on my screen this is a particular format uh, which will give us uh, our efs dns entry and the complete name which we have to use so this is availability zone dot file system id dot efs dot aws region the specific region which is us west 2 in our case then dot amazon aws dot com then colon slash okay so to grab availability zone id here i can simply run curl and I can grab it from metadata of instance pressing enter here this is ID US West 2 way okay so now the format would be the format would be like this US West 2 way which is our availability zone dot FSID dot EFS dot region which is US West 2 dot Amazon AWS dot com colon slash okay so this is our EFS share detail friends and uh, this FS ID I got uh, from this window when we run uh, describe mount target command or this is FS ID which we got okay so to mount it friends uh, I'm just putting to mount it uh, we have to use mount command using couple of uh, Amazon recommended uh, options so I'm mounting it as NFS4 so first thing we have to install nfs packages because by default if you see nfs will be not here let me show you to mount nfs uh, you need nfs packages right now there is no nfs so let's install nfs packages here please note uh, no need to install server packages we need only nfs utils which is which de deliver nfs file system so these are the dependency packages okay yes install it Okay, so packages are installed let's verify rpm minus qa grep nfs nfs util should be there along with the id map yep so that's there next thing friends we have to create one mount point where we want to mount our efs file system i'm making it name efs share okay so now let's try to mount it and mount command minus t is a file system type which is nfs4 and here I'm using NFS version 4.1, which I told Amazon recommended. This is the R size, W size, and the option is hard. This is timeout value, this is the re transmissions value, and this is the file system 
info which I discussed a couple of seconds back like and this is the mount point where it need to be mounted so it's mounted let's do df minus h on this mount point if you see this mount point is created it got 8 extra byte space that's huge friends and we will be charged whatever space we will use we will be not getting charged for 8 extra bytes so that's fine uh, let's create one directory inside this mount point for test whether we can write it on or not so directory is created ls minus ld so friends uh, that's a way if you want to mount same file system on other servers just for uh, run this command simply run this command only thing your server need to be in same subnet id and same security group where we allow access that's it friends and uh, if you want to make this one persistent simply do add uh, fs tab entry let me show you how we can add it vi etc fs tab here just always put a comment for your this is our application efs file system and format will be let me format is this is the file system starting from here till here okay okay so i have added uh, these entries friend this is our efs file system this is the mount point where it need to be mounted this is the file system type it's nfs4 instead of nfs let me correct it we can mount it as nfs also but i will stick with amazon recommendations and these are the mount options nfs version 4.1 this is our size w size and 0, 00 at the end i'm saving this file for test i will unmount file system which i mounted uh, manually it's u mount you mount this one let's run df minus h now let's try to mount it using mount command so fs step file will be readed then mount minus a let's do df minus h you see file system is mounted and uh, let's grab uh, mount tab for this file system you see all options are there which we specified in fs step so friends uh, that's a way to mount file system properly whether that's uh, efs nfs or any xfs or any file system friends so just mount it uh, using fs step so it will give you surety next time when server reboot the file system is going to be mounted so thanks friend for watching this video if you have to mount same efs on other node just add fs step entry and uh, run mount minus a only thing which I told earlier that particular host should be in the security group where we allowed access. If that is not, you have to modify security group settings. So thanks a lot for watching this video. If you have any query or suggestion, just leave a comment on my YouTube channel, friends. Bye-bye.